In today's video, we're going to look at a cassette deck. This one's a Sony TCWE435. This is a double auto reverse cassette deck. It has a bit of a problem that's going to require complete disassembly to repair it. Hope you guys enjoy this one. These are relatively a cheap deck with a lot of plastic parts on it, as you will see. Coming right up on Tech Talk. Let's listen to what happens when the power is applied. And that's all it does. Now I'll look inside as I power the unit up so we can observe what's happening. You notice that this one here, the belt is come off or broken. You'll see the, the caps and um, shaft turn on this one. But this one here is not turning. As you can see, the belt has come off because the belt has turned to mush. So we need to change the belt. And it probably wouldn't hurt to change the belt on the other one as well. Because they're both going to be pretty soft. Actually, all the belts probably should be changed. There's only four of them total. So, first thing I have to do is determine whether I actually have a belt for this. So these units are not that difficult to change the belts. We could unplug the control FPC to gain easy access to the mechanism. And I can pull this mechanism out by just removing four screws if I want to work on the unit outside of the, uh, the cabinet, which is probably the easiest to do. So let's open the, the uh, I have to put this through its motions here. Now, once I, once I reset the mechanism, I should be able to open it. I'm going to trip the solenoid to drop the mechanism remove the cassette that's in there a Daryl Hall and John Oates H2O cassette pre-recorded cassette now that the cassette is removed I can remove the mechanism itself for easy access four screws hold the mechanism in Of course, as I'm about to find out, it's more than the four screws because I actually have to remove the, the face from the unit. Just because of the way this unit is designed, you can't just remove the deck. It has a piece of plastic that's part of the front face that you actually have to remove the, uh, the actual face of it so that you can take the decks out. Some other decks allowed you to remove them without taking it all apart, but this particular design, it has a back plate that's part of the front face that is going to be in the way and won't allow me to remove the unit unless I, well, you'll see, just, just watch. Watch and learn. And there's one more screw on the bottom that has to come out. I do want to remove the tape door lid. So we just lift that up. That way the entire mechanism can lift out. And I should unplug the, uh, the head plug at the back here as well. It might be easier to do that once I get the mechanism out of the unit itself. Of course, Sony has chosen to make things not easy at all. I'm going to have to actually remove the face because the back to the, uh, the tape holder is not part of the mechanism. I have to lift it down so I have to take the, the face off so that I can lift this down and out. So there's another couple screws that I have to take out to do that. Namely the screw for the second deck. One here, one up here, and one down here. everything while I'm at it. I guess I could probably 
actually put this other one uh, back in here as this whole thing's going to come out. It's one piece. Then I can lift the deck out like this, you see. The deck has to come out. I have to lift it out like that. Kind of a silly design. Now I can unplug it. I'll take the other deck out. We'll work on both of them separate and replace the belts on it. There's just two belts on each one that need to be changed. So I'll remove the other deck as well and uh, we'll change all the belts. I just want to see how this, how this uh, belt is loaded around the motor here whether the motor actually has to come out which it might the motor might have to come out to uh, I think it does have to come out because of the way that the, the uh, belt is looped around the pulley there's no it, like it's trapped so the motor has to come out so both decks will have to come out motors held in place by a couple screws that go through from this side here screwdriver that's small enough to reach down there. Or else I have to take off the basket, which I might have to do. So to do that we just release the spring here. Okay, now I can get at the screws that hold the, uh, the motor in place. There's two of them. They're down here. A little more work than meets the eye to change the belts on these units. Here's belt number one, and of course belt number two is this one here. Now i got to go through my collection of belts and see if I can find a couple belts that will work on this unit. Let's try this one. Okay, that belt works. So that's the that's the, uh, the square belt. There's the old one. Put that one aside so it doesn't get mixed up with my new belts. And then we'll find a flat belt that will work. So here's the flat belt that I need to replace. And I do have the right uh, thickness of belts this time. So let's see if I can find one that's the right uh, diameter that will work. A little smaller than the original one will probably be fine because the original one is all stretched out of shape. Let's 
See that one's really badly stretched. That might be a little bit on the a little too small. This one here looks like it's probably going to be a contender. How the belts go in on this is it goes around one pulley and then it goes around the other side. So one one side of the belt turns this plastic flywheel this way while this one's turning the other flywheel. Actually this flywheel turns this way and this flywheel turns this way like this. Is that how it turns? No, it turns this way. It turns that way like that. So we're going to loop the belt around the, the motor shaft first and set the motor in place and put the screws in. It lines up with a little pin that holds the motor in place. And then once we've got the motor secured, then I can uh, work with uh, threading the belt. So the motor is in place there. Magnetic screwdrivers are a must when you do this type of work. Okay, now it's just a matter of threading the belt around the pulley and around the other side of the other. And there it goes like that. When the solenoid trips, right here, it engages a gear, which changes modes. Now, as you can see, the pinch roller has been raised. If we click the... Now it's gone into search mode. One more. Now it's gone into full fast forward mode. And now it's into stop mode. That's the mechanism. So this one is done. This deck should be okay. And put the front cassette housing back on and then, and then spring back like that when you press the eject button over here it opens so that's Deck number one, done. We'll put deck number one back into the mechanism and take out deck number two, actually. Probably take deck two out and just work on it outside of the unit because it's a lot easier than trying to work with it in the unit. So let me just get deck number two out here and then we'll do the belts on that. I'm sure I've got some more. These decks are different. This is a playback only deck. This has this this dual deck has a, I think it's an auto yeah it's an auto reverse playback deck on one side, and the other side was a record play deck. The double cassette deck that I have is the Pioneer, and it actually records on both sides, which most did not. Most of them were a playback deck on one side. And a record deck on the other to facilitate making a copy of a, a tape. But nobody did, right? Nobody, nobody bootlegged their tapes.
So here's the other deck. As you see, it's only got a single playback head. It does not have an erase head. Whereas this other deck has a combination erase head and record play. If we look here, you see it has the erase head here. And this one does not. Basically, that's the only difference between the two mechanisms. And of course, they're the mirror image of each other because the eject mechanism is on this side, on this one, versus the other side. Okay, back to the belt collection. Find a couple more belts. Okay, found two more belts that are going to do the job. There's one. The other one, we just put it in behind here. Drop the motor back in place. So there, it's on as it's supposed to be. Everything's running nice and smooth now. So now we can put the mechanism back together, just like the other one. Time to reset the mechanisms into the cabinet. I gotta make sure I get these buttons back in too, because of course the eject buttons come out when you do that. You have to put, make sure that these are sitting back in their trays. Otherwise, uh, you won't be able to open the, the cassette compartment up. But we just slide the mechanism back in.
get a couple more screws in the bottom to hold the face plate on. We'll put those in first. One last grounding screw for there's a ground wire here. Time to test it. Let's um, see how close it is on speed. Ooh, a lot of wild flutter on this thing, but speed wise, we're looking pretty good there. A little bit of wild flutter, you can actually see it in the waveform. These decks weren't great for. Well, on flutter due to the plastic flywheels. Here's the other deck, it's also pretty close. Again, it's got wand flutter on it too. Let's uh, take a listen to how it plays music. Probably no Dolby on this recording. We'll make a recording on this deck on the B side. So that's the A side playback. And I've yet to clean the heads on it, but I'll be doing that momentarily. Here's the B side, or the B deck. Sounds respectable. Let's cue it up and make a recording. We'll clean the heads too. Let's uh, do a recording and uh, see how this thing sounds. So we're recording here to see record pause and I gotta release the pause and we should be ready to go now Here's playback. That speed sounds good, so that's uh, how you change the belts in one of these Sony TCWE 435s. Not the easiest ones in the world to change the belts on because of the amount of work you got to do to take it all apart, but that's the only way to do it on these ones. And of course, the pre recorded tape that was in it. We never noticed the wound flutter on that kind of music anyway, right? Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one real soon.